Hi, and welcome to episode 30-something, I don't even know, of the Cat Lady Podcast. It's December something, the 16th, December 16th, 2015. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am your host, Andrea, also known as the Cat Lady. That's 2-T-C-A-T-T. -T -T. It stands for Craft All the Things. Even though I have not been a true Cat Lady lately, it's been a knit all the things kind of thing. A little bit of sewing. But typically, I like to spin and dabble in crochet as well. So, very fibery related uh, podcast uh, with touches of other crafts, cross stitch, sometimes some DIY stuff. Um, fiber prep. I was really into this summer, so which I'll probably be into again next summer. Can't really do much in my garage when it's cold. Um, yeah, so I have no show notes. <laughs> it's holiday time. It's busy. See my tree. Thought I'd uh, record where my tree is because, you know, it's festive. I don't know what my schedule is going to be like for the next couple weeks as far as, you know, recording. Next week, I think I have Emily. Emily's last day of school is Friday. So she's going to be with me from the, you know, end of the day at the 18th all the way to January 4th. So maybe I'll take a break. And I mean, I don't think there's going to be a ton going on anyways because uh, if you haven't heard of winter camp, I'll kind of talk about that a little bit too. Uh, that's going to start January. So that's going to be like knit all the things all the time. So I'm not, I'm really refraining from casting on anything new uh, until then. So maybe, maybe a little break would be good. Uh, I know a couple other podcasters are taking a little holiday break. So maybe I'll do the same because I'm running out of things to talk about. But today is a big day. I have things to talk about. Uh, so there's a lot of podcast news. There's a little bit of knitting and a tiny, tiny bit of sewing. Uh, I'll do a brief recap of winter camp because signups are closing in a couple of days, end of the week. So I have, I have stash. I have a decent amount of stash uh, from the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted game that was going on on Instagram. And I got a special giveaway planned. So yeah, maybe I'll post up the giveaway and talk about the giveaway and then leave that up until the new year and uh, keep that up there for a while. So let's get to it. Podcast news. Uh, I have a couple introductions. I'm using my iPad today as my uh, notes, really. Um, if you want to come say hi to me, the sh pop over to the Ravelry group. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, blah, 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 everywhere. Um, but pop over to the Ravelry group. That's where most of the action is going on. Come say hi, and I will say hi to you. So this week we will say hi to Brandy, which I talk to Brandy all the time. She's in our little uh, gang of people we that VKN a lot and chat a lot so she's she says you should know that hi hi I'm Brandy and you should know that I'm ter terribly late with introductions so she's been knitting for six years so hi Brandy uh also is Patty Feller she heard about my podcast from the Canadian Knitter and she's gonna join winter camp so she's very excited uh let's see she lives in New Jersey learned to knit when she was young and she also does cross stitch do, 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 do. She has three grown boys, two large dogs, and two cats. So hello to Patty. Thank you for uh, saying hi. So those were introductions. And then, let's see, there's been some chit chat in the chit chat thread. So if you're working on something fun or you just want to talk about what you're working on, come over and join that, uh, that one. Also, I have set up is the Yarny Wishes thread. If you haven't if you didn't participate in the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted on uh, Instagram or you have other wishes or you want to grant wishes, go ahead and I'm just going to keep that up forever, whatever. It's nothing really, it's just something fun. So some people, I have one person that's asked, she's making an around the world mitered square blanket, so a mini scrap yarn blanket. She's trying to gather minis from around the world, so that's really exciting and I think she's going to get one from France. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. If once I get some extra minis, since I, I just I don't I don't have a lot of sock yarn and I don't have a lot of sock. I mean I've been doing my knit pick socks, um, but I've been using those minis for my blanket because I don't have much left. <laughs> but once I get a mini, I will send it to you from Michigan. If you don't already have a Michigan mini, so ideally I should try to find. Oh, ooh, if I have a mini left over from my Michigan mill ends, uh, that would be perfect because it's a Michigan company too so there's that but anyways if you have uh if you have anything so check that out 
And we have some giveaways. So we have the Autumn Catalog. So I'm going to draw for that right now. And this was the uh, animal themed giveaway. So we have, let's see, 64 entries, which is pretty good. So we will draw a random number from two to 64. And I should, I'm just going to have to listen to this and write it down. Two to 64, because I don't have any notebook. I don't have any notes, no notebook with me. Result is 50. You see that? So post number 50 for the catalog. So let's go to page two. I was very happy to see all the entries. Everyone's stuff was very nice. Um, I loved all the animal sweaters and Brandy threw in the little cat hat at the very end, which was hilarious. Uh, sorry, Brandy, you didn't win. <laughs> so let's see. Post 50 is... Oh, it is a dog sweater! Yay! <laughs> a little bird. Here's Tulip in her Bible sweater. She did not want to miss out on the Bible craze. That is adorable. Oh, I'm very excited at this one just because it's so cute. Look at that! Ah! <laughs> so, post 50 is a little bird. So please, a little bird. I'm trying to sit comfortably here. Please, uh contact me and you will be winning a, your choice of the, I didn't bring it, the cat drawstring bag or the little fox's drawstring bag and a credit US, rivalry credit up to US $5, $5 US, Ugh, can't talk. So based on a pattern on rivalry. So contact me it's, uh, when you can. Uh, you'll have 30 days to contact me and uh, if I don't hear back then I'll have to draw again but hopefully you contact me because that is a super adorable project to win so I'm very excited <laughs> again everyone's projects were awesome but I really was partial to the dog sweaters because how cute is that uh, okay so the next giveaway is an idea I didn't bring that down either it's the uh, yarn from mint rain hand dyed yarn and it's a real pretty it's called berry Sunday. I'll put the picture up as well as the other couple of goodies she uh she threw in there so let's see go back to that thread probably show you a picture yeah i'm so sorry lots of uh just random silence here okay so there's the yarn pretty reds and kind of burgundies um <clears throat> I had 52 entries in that, so we will draw a number from two to, my iPad's kind of slow, so that doesn't help either. Two to 52, generate 42. I keep having to get up and down. Okay, and there we go, 42. who wins the pretty yarn also on page two and she has a coupon code going on so if you didn't win and you want to order something it's 10% off head out to our Etsy store that is linked in my coupon codes thread as well as in the well I'm gonna probably archive the giveaway thread so 10% off the code the cat lady mint rain hand dyed yarn she's uh on Etsy so what, oh, what did I say 42 <laughs> 42 is Crafty Lynette R. She liked the Welcome to the 80s colorway, as, and she said Mossy Grove is beautiful too. So Crafty Lynette R. Post that up there. Post 42. Please contact me as soon as you can, and I can ship that up to you. So thank you everyone for entering the giveaways. I have lots of giveaways coming up actually so I have one that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes I have a knot bag from Sue at the Tangled Skein CA who Sue is from Two Tangled Skeins podcast and makes these amazing knot bags so here's that and you just go like this and it's a sweet little knot, knot bag so very well made fits a yarn it as well as a project so it'll easily fit two Two balls of sock yarn too. Um, 
very roomy, perfect little project bag. And it fits in my purse that I got, so, you know, it's kind of my carry-around project, and, you know, you can just stick it on here. So I'll be doing a giveaway at the beginning of the year for this, or for one of these, and actually it's your choice, so you can pick one out of her shop or talk to her about your fabric preferences, and she'll make one custom for you. So stay tuned for that at the beginning of the year. She also has a coupon code going on, 15% uh, off uh, any purchase, $10 or more on her Etsy site. It's in my coupon codes thread, and the code, uh, coupon code is the cat lady, so two T's. Um, and I was just contacted last night by you so-and-so. Very excited, and I'll tell you why she contacted me, actually, but she wants to do a giveaway, too. So when I get into the stash, I will elaborate on that, but... I still need to work out the details of that, so probably not until next next year or two. So lots of lots of fun stuff, and I still need to get with the Jazz Hands uh, Fiber Fusion. I think that was her on Etsy. She makes this really cool cotton gradient. It's just a very unique yarn. Um, I'm supposed to get with her to pick out some yarn and give her a bag and everything. So I got to get with that too. So lots of giveaways coming in the new year, um, and then I'm gonna um, yeah I won't I won't I won't mention it, but anyways. It's nothing. Don't worry. You're not missing anything. So is that it for podcast news? Let's see. Let's look at my group here. So 50 and 42. I'll remember that. Um, to, 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 introduction, self-promotion. If you have a, uh, it's episode 37, by the way. If you have a Etsy stop, shop, you make things, whatever, there's a self-promo thread. I don't think there was anything new in there. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, oh, I don't know if I did mention that. Let's see. Uh, Lolita uh, just opened a blog called stitchandcough.blogspot.ca. Uh, it's just her dealing with uh, some health health issues and her knitting. And um, so, yeah, so check her out if you'd like to read about knitting and just uh, how to overcome some health concerns and still do the things that you love. So, uh, I'm looking forward to catching up on that. So, other than that, I think that's it for podcast news. I feel like I'm missing something, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about winter camp, I guess, at the end of the... I, I guess because I was thinking on my, my drive today that uh, I'm going to be talking about winter camp a lot. So, I think what I'll have to do is I don't really want to make separate episodes, but I'll just put it at the very, very end. So I'll do news, I'll do knitting, that's probably all I'll do. I'm going to have to do sewing in there too, probably, because I, you know, I still want to try to maybe open an Etsy store or something and do bags, but uh, I'll do my week in review, and then at that after that I'll be like, goodbye, and then go into winter camp, because that'll be separate, so that if you're only here for winter camp, you can fast forward to the very end and watch the winter camp updates. If you're not in winter camp, you can just watch the podcast, etc., so... Stay tuned for that. Um, so, very exciting. My friend Kim, who is chasing acorns on Etsy, has, she makes bags, she dyes yarn, she makes stitch markers. She doesn't have a lot in her Etsy store right now. I don't know if she has anything in her store right now. I think she's been looking for a different avenue as far as where she wants to sell and she does a lot of shows so she does a lot of shows in Michigan so let me see if I can find her Etsy store real quick but anyways I got I was lucky enough to spend the day with her on Saturday which I'll talk about more in a little bit and she was telling me about a new let's see a new bag she was coming up with and not only did she make a new bag but she is now in a store in mid Michigan, so that's very exciting. So, yeah, she doesn't have a lot of uh, oh, I don't want to open it in the app. Come on, iPad. Okay, nope, I don't want to do that. Okay, so there's her Etsy page, and yeah, she's just got some odds and ends right, right now, but she dyes beautiful yarn that I can put a picture up of some yarn that she's dyed, and she makes bags. So this is, will be, I will have a thread for a giveaway for this bag. So 
it looks like a regular bag. Just uh, it's got the little side side drawstring with the little uh, closer thingy. It's got a nice handle strap and a little carabiner carabiner clip to clip onto something. But so you got your little strap, you got your closure. So I'm like, okay, what's so special about this bag? Oh, I'll show you the inside. It's got our little label in there and real nice nylon lining. So, you know, it's easy to wipe clean. The yarn doesn't get all stuck in there. So it's actually very nice. So what makes this bag different is it's kind of a convertible bag. It's got these little snaps on the bottom. So it goes from being like just a regular standard drawstring pouch to a little box bag. Because everyone likes the little box bags because they stand up on their own. And it's still roomy enough to fit, you know, two skeins of sock yarn, so sock size. So how cool is that? So you can have your choice. You can have either just do your drawstring or your uh, flat bottom pouch, which, you know, you'll hold a little more in there. So if you have a shawl, you probably manage to fit that in there or a bulky hat or something, you know. But then if you're working on a pair of socks or something a little bit smaller, a pair of fingerless mitts, and you want to just work out of the bag, snap those, snap those closed. And you got your, your bo boxy bag, your boxy bottom, just like, you know, just like that. So this is really cool and so again she is now going to be selling them at a little yarn shop in Saginaw. So I will post all the links in I'll post all the links in the show notes as well as I will set up a giveaway thread. Um, so as far as the giveaway thread, I can't really have you visit her Etsy store because she doesn't really have much. Um, I guess tell me, tell me what you would like to put in your in your bag and of course it's got little mustaches on it which are cute um so what would you like to do with this bag what would you use the bag for would you make socks would you put a shawl would you i don't know just what would you use this project bag for <laughs> um and again if you uh are interested in ordering anything from kim it's best just probably to message her. You can message her on Etsy, and again, I'll show some pictures of uh, some yarn she's dyed, and you know, she's got tons of fabric for custom bags, but all her bags are, she makes just the regular bags without the snaps, too. So, I mean, if you just want a pouch, pouch style bag, uh, she could custom fabric, you know, or work with you in for, for as fabric uh, preferences and stuff, but she does all the same like lining, you know, she's very production, you know, she just wants to, she has a look, she, this, I think this, she really likes the sewing, she likes the yarn dyeing, but she, I th she seems really drawn to the bag making, so when she does her show, she typically does the bag making a lot. Um, so that's Chasing Acorns, her name's Kim, uh, you can follow her on Instagram, and actually you probably see some of her stuff on Instagram. And you can find her at a little yarn shop in Saginaw, if you're local. So, thank you, Kim, for donating that. Or, yeah, for letting me give that away. And, um, okay. Time travel. So, on to knitting. I have a finished object. Um, I finished my Christmas socks. These are my Jingle Wells, as I'm calling them. Um, they are the Knit Picks Felici in the Jingle colorway. I did them on size ones, which was not intentional. I meant to make these for my daughter, and they I increased too big to the point where they were big enough for me and just went with it. So, again, I'm not thrilled with the fit. I like the fit. It's snug. I'm not thrilled with the stretching, and but I'm getting that on any size needle. It's not the fault of the needle. I am afraid that they're going to wear out quicker since it is such a, you know, looser fabric, it's not as, you know, um, dense, uh, which I was talking to my friend Jen, the Uncreative Crafter, and she says she actually steps down a needle size to do her heel, and that's not a bad idea either, just to make it a, 
denser fabric. But I did do a Fish Lips Kiss Heel. I broke the yarn to maintain the color stripes. So there is no, no break in the pattern as far as the stripes go. There's no weird one, two, one or two row stripe in the front. So I actually broke the yarn and rejoined it, which was, you know, a little more weaving at the end. And I did weave them, Jen. They're finished. I weaved them. She's a, she's a interesting character sometimes. Uh, she doesn't think an object is finished unless the ends are woven in, so. Which I usually weave in my ends, so I'm not much of a stickler uh, as far as, you know. But I'll call it finished if it's not woven in. Um, the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, yeah. Uh, I did a crap ton of ribbing because it, it fits better that way, so. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with them. My next plan as far as the quest for the perfect sock is to do maybe an increase row right before the heel and then make the heel deeper. I think the heel, I think I get a lot of stretch. I get a lot of stretch right where it's like underneath the heel, like where, where it pulls for the heel. So like I need more, I need to build the heel deeper I think to eliminate that god awful stretch. So, so yeah, but I finished my Christmas socks and I will wear them proudly on Christmas day and they fit nicely. They, I feel like between this pair and my uh, gummy bear pair are, are about my favorites. And I don't remember where my gummy bears were made on. They were made on zeros. So I need to sew elastic into the mosaic ones cause they just, they're just not tall enough and to, you know, grab on. So, and I didn't do, I didn't do, you know, all the ribbing. So this will be the, 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 this will be the formula. About 50 rows of ribbing. Fish lips kiss heel. I'm going to try to make it deeper. So I'll try to increase, a, I'll increase four stitches maybe. I don't know. I don't know yet. I'll increase, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. I'll do the increases as I would the toe. So two in the front, two in the, two on each side. Um, and then I will build the heel and, and that'll add a few extra short rows and see how that goes. Give that a try next time. And I will go back to my zeros instead of the ones. You know, they knit so fast. So that was all I finished. So my work in progress is my sock firmly. So these are the little jingle bells and it's just a tube sock. So pretty much it's just a toe and a cuff. Um, and I'm almost done. I'm on the ribbing. So I'm going to do a couple stripes of ribbing. And I made these a little bit. So let's see. I cast on 20, increased to 52. Because the last pair I made her were on one and a half. So I increased to 48. So I just stepped it up and I tried it on her. It seems fine. And I'm making it a little bit taller. Her last sock was 10 inches. I think I'm trying to make this like 11, 12 inches. Just, just the heck of it. And putting a little bit more ribbing on it, which she could care less of her socks slouchy or whatever, but, um, so yeah, I started this, what's today, Wednesday, I started this on Monday, so I got almost, I almost finished it yesterday, I was trying to finish it, but I didn't, so, one done, one more to go, and then on to David's, so I want to finish them by Christmas, I'm, I'm looking pretty good, if I do finish those by Christmas, I have a few other odds and ends I need to get ready for camp, like, uh, caking up some yarn, and swatching and whatever but uh which some of it has to wait till after christmas when i get my christmas yarn but uh other than that i'm gonna i might get some spinning done i'm hoping to get on get on the wheel before the end of the year and take advantage of the now knitting time that i'm gonna have so i might actually get some spinning done i'll be really excited if i can finish the braid that i've been working on if i can get that off the wheel by the end of the year because i really am not going to do any more knitting after these tube socks i'm there's nothing i want to start casting on because i want to wait till camp so so that counts for camp. Um, so that was it for knitting. So on to sewing. Oh, I forgot, I'm gonna, I forgot to talk about that bag. Okay, well, let me get into sewing and I might, yeah, okay. I'll talk about sewing and then I'm going to pause, talk about the bag and I'm gonna probably pop it in the front. <laughs> So, anyways, I finished all the bags that I had piled, you know, that we've seen half finished. So I didn't bring them down because I didn't feel like carrying it all down. So, 
100 member giveaway. Your bag is ready and it will go out soon. Caitlin from Mint Rain, if you're watching, your bag is done. <laughs> and so is your, um, so is the DPN holder. So that will go out. And Paul, Paulie 81 your bag and the piano holder is done, so it'll go out soon. So as soon as I get everything packaged up, it'll go out. So hopefully by the end of the week, early next week, cross my fingers. Right in time for all the Christmas madness, uh, mail madness, so probably not a great time to send it out, but done, I'm gonna get it out. So I'm sorry it took so long, I'm just terribly slow at this stuff, so. But anyways, I finished the bags and I finished some uh, DPN holders, as you see here one two so I have two of the pink ones uh, I made these a tad bigger so that they fit both seven inch and six inch I think that's the is it five and six five inch and six, five inch and six inch maybe is that what it is whatever those smaller needles which are typically the sock needles and then the larger DPNs which tend to be seven inch um, but some people use or six inch six inch sock DPNs too which uh, this fits snug for a six inch DPN. So you can't really put sharp ones in there. So when I use, I have bamboo ones, so that fits in there very, just fine. If I was to use sharper ones like Jen uses, uh, I think she uses like carbons or something and I don't know if those are sharp or, the ones that are pointier tips, obviously, they might poke through the fabric. So I'm working on making a, just a little bit, just needs to be a little bit bigger for with some wiggle room. It might still poke a little bit, but it's not gonna shred it, so. Um, but I'm going to send one to Jen to test out to see how it works. And then I might need to rearrange the button configuration. So this buttons I put on, I moved them in a little bit. And I think I might have moved them in a little, like it's like there's not a lot of project room in here. Now for this sock it's fine. I mean you can squinch your stitches in, but ideally, and I think I made these ones a little bit, yeah, I moved, I moved these ones a little bit more. I've seen them where there's two buttons on one side, which that works better probably, but I just don't like the way it looks better. I like the kind of symmetrical buttons. So, but ideally, even if I made this a half an inch bigger, just for a little bit of wiggle room, I could probably leave the buttons where they are. I don't know. That's why I'll send one to Jen the test, but there's another one. So blue fabric on the inside or uh, brown fabric on the inside I like this I like this one I think I'm gonna keep this one um, yeah and the snaps the snaps are fine on this one but for some reason they just don't feel like they take as well I don't know if I need to re-squish them um, and this one I just have yeah I mean listen to that that one just like it snaps that's kind of yeah, I'll just keep that one for myself. <laughs> uh, this one's got blue, kind of blue on the inside. So that's the other one. <sighs> so that was sewing. That was it. Uh, I'm just glad I got those done. So, so on to stash. I got some of my yarn wishes. So we'll start with that. So again, if you hadn't seen on Instagram, there was a get your yarn wishes granted whole thingamajig. You asked for things, you got things, yada, yada, yada. So let's see, I'll try to do them in order that I got them. Still, and then I'm actually still waiting for two more. So I sent out about, I sent out six packages, seven bags worth in six packages, because one of them had two in there. Um, and I got five. One, two, three, four, five. So, pretty good. So, my first one was... Oh! This is Juliana's Fiber. And it's called Above the Clouds. It's pretty blue cloud, light sky blue with a rainbow in there. So that's amazing. And it's on her Lucid Dream sock base. It's a 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 113 grams, four ounces, 420 yards. So I don't have a plan for it yet, but, and I don't know if I'll use it for camp. Um, so we'll see. 
but I'm gonna be doing a hitchhiker out of the Rachel from Love Knots unicorn poop for the poop along. <laughs> uh, a few of us are using it's actually the hitchhiker poop along for a couple of us. We're going to do a hitchhiker in the unicorn poop. Um, but we've kind of opened it up. It's unofficial. It's not really anything. It's just kind of whatever. If you want to join in, if you have some unicorn poop yarn, uh, you can join in. If you Or if you're just making a hitchhiker, you can join in. So, you know, it's kind of like we're doing hitchhikers or we're using unicorn poop. Which I hate that name. I really hate that name. And I've said that before, but it is what it is. Anyways. <laughs> This was, I, I didn't ask the Instagram users if I could mention them, so if you're watching, thank you. Of course, you know who you are if you sent it to me, so. Uh, and next up was this package, which I got a skein of the Heartland yarn in the tweed. And actually, you know, I've, I've used Heartland numerous times. I don't think I've ever seen the tweed, so that's pretty. Uh, it's kind of, what is it? Uh, Shenandoah tweed. So it's kind of a mustardy gold color. And then she put in the Bling Bling Barocco Cotton Acrylic Aluminum. <laughs> That's an interesting blend, but it's pretty sparkly. I'm sure I can make something for Emily with that. She'd like that. It's kind of speckled uh, flecks of silver and black. And then she made these really cool stitch markers. I'm thinking I usually use stitch markers for my like you know fingering work so I might make these into like progress keepers so I can just hang them from the front and stuff but they're really pretty or if I'm doing bulky projects but usually my bulky projects don't require I don't work with bulky enough but these are super pretty thank you to thank you to you as well and she was a local she was Here's a local uh, gifter. And then, absolutely amazed and stunned by this one. So I asked for, my wish was uh, some BFL sock yarn. Um, and she's like, oh, I have a skein of this BFL sock yarn from Ancient, ancient Fiber Arts? Ancient, ancient Arts. Ancient Arts Fiber? I don't remember. Ancient Fiber Arts or Ancient, just Ancient Arts probably. And if she's watching, she's going to be like, what? She had this in a big ball. And I'm like, I really want to, I like to show it off in the hank, so I just reskained it. <laughs> so, waste of time because I'm going to have to re-cake it or ball it because she just had it in a ball because she had planned to knit with it. And I think she said she started to knit something with it and her friend didn't like the color or something. So, she took it out. So, this is called Cherry Custard. Beautiful, beautiful burgundies, pinks, whites. I mean, like, burgundies my favorite color. So, this is, like, a spot on, like, perfect for me. So I can't wait to knit that up. Super pretty. So, but doesn't it look so pretty in this game? <laughs> Was it worth the 20 minutes it took? I don't know, but it'll store better on my shelf too that way. But then she put in like a ton of minis that are not mini. Okay, these are huge. So uh, I'm sure I'll be sharing these minis with some of my friends. So, but lots of minis. Got some tea, some caramel chai, cocoa spice. There's two of each I'm missing. So tea. And a little card. She wrote my name out. And then this little note that says knit in good health. Let's see, oh yes, just sticky note. That's really cute. She's got good hand, good little uh calligraphy writing there. It all came in this really cute box. I know that this looks like a subscription box of some sort, but it's cute. Uh, and then she listed what all the minis were, and then she felt bad for uh, sending it late, so she put him a bag, a project bag. I mean, like, seriously, she said she watched the podcast and said I mentioned I wanted a zippered, kind of a zippered pat bag, and this is from you so-and-so. So I, being the, you know, good Instagrammer, tagged you so-and-so in my post and said I got this lovely bag from you, <clears throat> by you so-and-so, and, you know, and I tagged the Ancient Arts for the yarn and so she sent me a message on Ravelry she said, I see you got one of my bags and I was wondering I've never seen your podcast but I thought I'd check it out and I was wondering if you wanted to do a giveaway so it's like oh, yes of course I would so this is a you so and so bag super cute and super cute owls because who doesn't love owls and I love those kind of owls I like the little abstract kind of owls but it's got a little sheepy on the 
zipper pull. Um, and then just yellow little hearts, kind of little dotted hearts or something on the inside. It's got a little pocket. Perfect to uh, like stick your pattern in. So this actually I'm going to use for the hitchhiker poop along. That's so that's gonna that's what's gonna live in there. But I'm not starting till camp. So super cute. Love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a beautiful box of stuff. And oh, and then I got I ordered on Amazon my pocket jewelry scale. It's a lot smaller than I thought. I knew it was going to be small. I mean, it doesn't say pocket scale, but boy, I, my expectations were a little different. It'll be fine. It's a little tricky to measure. It'll measure a ball yarn. It's a little tricky to measure like a hank, so it's going to have to be like off the measure. And it's mainly for camp, but so it goes, it's, it's 0 0.01 grams, so very hundredth of a gram to 300 grams. So very specific measurements. So Camp's gonna rely on a lot of measuring. So, this is it. <laughs> so I can fit a cake and I can fit a ball on there and measure it. So I'm basically essentially going to measure my yarn before I use it and then measure it after to calculate how many. So I'm gonna have to make spreadsheets for everything. So it comes in this little thing. It was on Amazon, it was like 12 bucks. So, but it's gonna be a lot more accurate than my kitchen scale because my kitchen scale doesn't do tents or my, it does, it, it's not, it's not meant for minute measurements, which I'm not looking to be that minute, like a hundred grams, but I figured, hundredth of a gram, but I figured, you know, my, why not, might as well. Um, and again, it's probably not perfect, but it'll, it'll get the job done, so. That was it for stash, almost. I have one more stash that, uh, kind of goes with my week in review. Did I have anything else to talk about? I don't think so. Okay, so we can review. We'll just jump right in it and finish up stash. So, as I mentioned, I went to Kim's house this weekend chasing acorns, and she that's when she showed me her bag. Well, I went over there to dye some yarn. So, back to the wishes thing. Do I have anything else to show? I really feel like this is all over the place. Anyways, back to the wishes thing. Jen, the under creative crafter, uh, was wanted to work with a dyer, an indie dyer, and create her own colorway. And she had some colors in mind. So I messaged Kim. I was like, hey, do you think you could do this? And I gave her the colors. And she's like, well, is she looking for, what kind of yarn is she looking for? Herself striping or regular? I'm like, I don't think it matters, you know. She's, and then so, like, didn't really hear from her. And then a couple days later, she's like, hey, all my yarn just came in. Do you want to come over Saturday and dye yarn? I'm like, oh, well, heck yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> went over to her place. And I talked with Jen. And I said, okay going to dye some yarn I'd like to try working on your colors and so we went back and forth and came up with this and I'll put up the picture that I that I came up with based on her colors and her picture she sent me so I went in I went in and Kim and I mixed a bunch of colors that we thought were uh, you know close enough or as close as we could get with the dyes and Kim dyed some of her own yarn which I still haven't seen it Kim you gotta send me a picture of your yarn she was doing a, like a kind of a tie dye yarn and then I was doing a low immersion dyeing, which I've never done. I've only done hand painting and with food coloring. So <clears throat> it was a new experience for me <clears throat> and it really turned out awesome. Didn't turn out what I, what I was thinking because I've never done low immersion dyeing. So I wasn't really sure what it was going to come out with because I'm so used to just hand painted. So, um, but this is how it turned out so you got your kind of darker blue it's a little more teal but you know it's pretty you got some uh, the greens and the browns and then the beige kind of in there so yeah it's really pretty it's kind of a speckly kind of yarn so but my first hand dyed yarn with real dyes. Very exciting. Long process. It, I was there all day. <laughs> um, just because you gotta wait for the cool and this and that, whatever. And yeah, we obviously talked a lot too. And we had lunch. So, but it was a really fun day and I really enjoyed myself. And I really, it just now I really want to, and I, I wanted to die before. Now I really, really, really want to die. But uh, I 
it's a lot of it's a lot of money to invest into getting the supplies you know I need to get all the dyes I need to get yarn and if you want to get yarn wholesale you you know you gotta buy it in bulk and then um, if I actually want to sell it I you know I need to have a tax ID number blah 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 you know so, so I don't know I don't know what what's gonna happen with it if I need to win the lottery but I don't play lottery so it's gonna be a problem but anyways this is Storm Coast based on Jen who is Storm Coast <laughs> colors um it's mcn so merino cashmere nylon so it's which i've never never knit with merino cashmere so very excited so now that i've shown this i can cake it up and do it to swatch because i'm kind of like ah, i want to play with it i want to play with it but i want to show it off before i took it out so i can't wait to do a swatch of that and see what that's going to look like and i have no idea what i'm gonna make with it might be might, might make a nice shawl or something so i really like shawls so so that was the other half of stash plus uh, part of my week. So usually I write down what I do because I don't remember what I did. So what did I do last week? Uh, Saturday. Oh, Friday I had a date night with my husband. We went out to dinner and we walked around the mall. And oh, I got something else. But I'll save it for later because uh, I'm not going to do anything with it right now anyways. Um, but we, yeah, we wandered around the mall. We got some presents for the kids. And yeah, just had a good time. And then... Saturday I went to Kim's house and that was pretty much an all-day event. I didn't get back till dinner time. So Sunday Oh, we had my niece's birthday party. So that was fun. We spent the day over at uh, my sister-in-law's house. So um, It was a tea party themed. It was very cute. Everything was put together very nicely So all the girls had a little tea party and there was cakes and cookies and sandwiches and stuff like that And Emily was a little shy. She doesn't she knew her cousin of course, but she didn't know she didn't know like any of the other girls there So she was kind of clingy. David was fine um brought my knitting with me so I did a little bit of that but uh yeah just hung out there for the day then get home it was a bit a little bit uh, about dinner time by the time we got home but we had eaten all day so it's not like we had dinner so I think I made the kids sandwiches peanut butter and jelly sandwiches um so yeah and then not much going on this week so far just uh trying to get things ready for Christmas I think we got all our presents mostly. I, mean, I gotta get teacher presents, which I'm going to do as soon as I uh, stop recording. I have to go out and get the teacher presents done. And I gotta finish all the tube socks and maybe get the spinning. So those are my only things like to do. I need to get my packages out. So I got pre presents for some of my little uh, nitty friends too that need to go out. So still feel like I'm overwhelmed and stressed out, but hey, that's okay. So that's what happens every holiday. So with that, uh, 40 minutes, pretty good. And again, go to the go to the group thread and enter the giveaway for the bag. And like, like I said, I'm gonna keep this up for until the new year just because it's, it's gonna be easier for me just to keep it up. So I'll make sure to post reminders on Instagram and all that fun stuff just to remind you that it's there to give it away. And go check out her I mean, go check out her Etsy store. Like I said, she doesn't have much on there right now, but uh, she, you can contact her if you're interested in a bag or some yarn, some yummy yarn. She mainly does the MCN, Merino Cashmere, so and it's for a great price, so check her out. And then she also does sparkle, just Merino nylon sparkle-based stuff, so that's always, I always love the sparkly stuff, so. Um, after, oh, I did. <laughs> she donated a prize for winter camp, which... Uh, if I think about it, I'll put a picture. If I get a picture of it, I'll put a picture of it. This is the donation for winter camp. Well, she has another one that's very similar. I'm like, oh my gosh, save that for me for until after Christmas and I'll buy it from you. So, uh, it's sparkly and pretty. So anyways, that's it. Hope everyone has a good holiday if I'm not back. So yeah, I'm not sure my schedule. I'm not gonna promise anything. So I might be back next week. I might not be back till next year. So we'll see. Depends on if the kids are good and if I have anything. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my tubes extra so, so I might just pop in for a few minutes and just say, hey, these are done. So, anyways, if I do talk to you, then just see you next time. If I don't talk to you, then have everyone have a very, very good holiday. Stay safe, have fun, try not to overstress, and I'll see you in the new year. So, if you are, uh, I'm going to do a quick bit on winter camp. So, if you want to hear about winter camp, then stick around. If not. Bye. Okay, winter camp. Uh, Signups are almost over. 
are almost closed. We're at like 230 people. We have seven leaders now. So, cause we added Lynn from Two Tangled Skeins. So we have Sue, Lynn from Two Tangled Skeins, each, each have their own cabin. Sarah, the Canadian Knitter Podcast. Jen, the Uncreative Crafter. Jessica, Sarah Noam Crafts. Amanda, Stitching You More, and me, the Cat Lady Podcast. So that's seven of us. Um, at this rate, we're averaging about 30 people per ca per cabin. So that's perfect. I think that's a just a fair, reasonable amount. Uh, you can't choose your cabin. It's gonna be very. It's gonna be randomly assigned. And I think uh, Sarah and our day camper leader, who is Mandy Pinecone. Which again, if you want to just if you like the camp idea but aren't sure you can commit to the three months, you can do the day camp thing, which is its own kind of separate little contest, different prizes, but still kind of can join in the fun. Um, <clears throat> but we're at like 30 day campers too, I think. So anyways, uh, signups close December 20th. After that, Mandy and Sarah will be randomly assigning the cabins. And then starting on December 31st, 7 p.m., your local time. So, because, I mean, we have some people that are overseas and, you know, of course, all across all the time zones. So 7 p.m., your time, December 31st, so New Year's Eve, you can cast on. Only rule is you cannot cast off before midnight. So make sure you don't do that, your bind off, until 12.01 p.m. So that makes sure it's January 1st. Um, but it's kind of just a fun, just New Year's Eve, cast off, kick off, so... Um, yeah, I, I will certainly be casting on something at 7 p.m. All my things are pretty large projects that I have in mind, so nothing I make is going to be finished in three hours. <clears throat> but, you know, I know you can crochet hats and stuff that fast if you're a very good uh, crocheter and, or if you're doing something bulky or whatever. But, so no, none of that. So stick with the bigger projects. Cast on on uh, 7 p.m. your time, December 31st, and have fun. Uh, some tips I was thinking about... So swatch, swatch everything in advance. So uh, as soon as I get my Christmas yarn, I will be swatching for my sweater. Pick out your patterns. I already made a spreadsheet of everything I'll be making. I think I talked about that last week. So I have a little spreadsheet and I have what months I want to finish them in to try to accumulate the bonus points. You get bonus points for whatever, you know, so we have like January is for your head. And if you make something for your head, I think, I don't remember the order, but you get the idea. So, um, and then there's going to be featured designers, which... If you want to be a featured designer, you have to hurry up and contest, contact us before the 20th as well because we will be closing that option so that we can designate the designers for each month. So again, so you can plan. And so if you pick a pattern by a featured designer and you do something, okay, I'm going to use your head for an example. So, so January, for your head, the colors are like blue and purple, I think. It's all in the sign up, sign up thread is all the information, but... So you do something for your head in blue and purple and you use a featured designer's pattern. You get 60 extra bonus points and you can only accumulate each set of bonus points one time. So you can get 20 points for color one time, you get 20 points for designer one time, you get 20 points for, for your head, whatever, one time. So you could get them all in one project or you could say, okay, I'm doing a hat, 20 points extra, doing this scarf by this this featured designer, okay, an extra 20 points for that project, and then I'm doing a blue pair of mittens, uh, so an extra 20 points for that. So basically you can accumulate 60 extra bonus points per month, um, and they're bonus points, so, you know, everything I have, I don't have designers, I, I kind of already have everything picked out, and it's probably none that are going to be featured designers, so unfortunately I won't be getting my full 60 points um, for that, but I'm trying to at least do the colors and the items. Um, oh, and now that I thought about think about it, I think I might have accumulated too many bonus points in some of those, because I was already trying to calculate the points. So I'm, I'm already messing up myself, so I'm glad I'm talking about this. But anyways, some tips that I'm thinking about too. Okay, swatch. Secondly... As far as like doing something like a sweater, you're going to have to weigh each ball of yarn first. So, because you're never going to be able to weigh a sweater. So I'm going to take my ball of yarn, I'm going to weigh it on my scale, I'm going to write it down. You know, 50. Or, you know, look at the ball band, but I'll probably weigh it just to make sure. Because, you know, if, there, if it's a, if it says 100 grams on there, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's 110. Well, okay, that's going to give me a little extra. That's going to push me into the next, uh next category with the under 50. So, I mean, take advantage of every gram you can. So, 
Um, I'll weigh my yarn. I'll write it down. And then I'll knit, 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 knit. And then weigh the next one. Write it down, knit, 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 knit. And then when I get to the end, okay, I'll weigh my ball. And okay, say I'll only use a quarter of it. Then I'll have to weigh it again and subtract of what's left. So, and that's going to be the only way I can weigh a sweater. You know, if God willing, I finish the sweater <laughs> by the end of the camp, but that's my plan. I'm doing it in the March color. So, you know, if I do get it back uh, at done by March, it will at least count for some bonus points. Um, other than that, just, uh, again, try to plan, try to have a little bit of advanced planning so you're not overwhelmed. Don't pick out too many projects. I think I've kind of averaged about three projects a month, which again, some of these are going to be ongoing. So I'm going to cast on my sweater in January, but it's not going to get done until February. Um, then I got like fingerless mitts, which, you know, those will be easier. Um, I got a hitchhiker, which should be a relatively easy one. I have socks, which, okay, I can do socks in about a couple of weeks, depending on if there's anything else going on a month. I put one sock, one pair of socks a month. So it's three pairs of socks. Um, and then, I'm trying to think what else. So I had three pairs of socks, the hitchhiker, the sweater, fingerless mitts. And I think that was it. I had six projects, about three projects a month. No, that's two. I have color affection on there as a maybe. I don't have any yarn for it. And I'm not sure if I want to underdo that large scale of a shawl. Uh, Sarah from the Canadian Knitter said it was really easy to do, so I did stick that back on my list, but I don't have the materials for it, so it's kind of up in the air. But what else did I have? Three socks. Oh, a handbrake cowl. So another handbrake cowl, which was easy. I did that in like two days. Um, uh, I think that's about it. I know, I had one other on there too, I think, but, but you get the idea. Um, what else? Don't stress out. Have fun. I mean, it's just for fun. We have lots of fun prizes. Uh, we have pattern donation, you know, pattern prizes, yarn prizes, bag prizes. Uh, each cabin leader is going to be able to give up to, I think, 100 bonus points uh, a month. So just for doing silly things like, hey, go uh, check out my Instagram page and, you know, whatever. Or, you know, I'm going to, what's the code word? And I'll, I'll record a podcast and put a code, code word in or something. I don't know. And my points count towards the cabin. However, my I am not eligible for prizes um, where all the cabin leaders are doing our own side thing where it's like, okay, whoever whoever's cabin gets the most points out of the seven of us, eight, I don't know. I think we're all just going to get something for Mandy, but <laughs> for, actual, for actual seven cabins, one the cabin with the most points, we'll all chip in and get the, the winner a prize. Um, as far as the top cabin that wins for you guys, you guys will then, that cabin will then be entered into the grand prize. So you could win all the little, you could win one little, and one prize per person as far as the little prizes, you know, that are given at the end, where all the prizes are going to be at the end. So they'll be just, they'll be, I don't know, oh, there'll be prizes for highest points and stuff. Um, but then there'll be a grand prize for that cabin with the most points. Um. Which then, if you had already won a little prize, you could still win the grand prize. So that's a whole separate drawing. So any questions, uh, contact any of us. Me, Sarah, Jen, Sue Lynn, Amanda, Mandy. Mandy's been really good at answering all the FAQ questions. So if you have questions, go into the thread and ask away. Um, there I go. I'm almost at an hour now that I was doing good at 42 minutes. But anyways. It's all extra camp stuff. So that's what's going to happen for the podcast for a while. So I'm going to have my podcast and then my extra camp section. So I can't wait to get my team and I'm excited for, for the, for the fun, fun adventure. I think that's going to be a really a fun way to pass the winter days away. So at least in the hemisphere that it's winter. So <laughs> anyways, any questions, please let me know and I will see you later. Bye.